Be Inspired TV. Everything in life can be taught and it's possible that you can be at the level you aspire to be in life. Join your host, Pastors Lenmo and Nancy Tarengwa, as they take us through Inspired Life Success Tips. Hello everyone. Welcome again to this um, inspiring episode of Be Inspired. And uh, in life, everything can be taught. You know, sometimes when you look at um, uh, how God created his, his, um, this world, he, he made sure that we are not independent of um, other people. We are, he made sure that we should, um, you know, coordinate. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about um, what can make you a better person in life. And um, uh, in this episode also, we're going to be inspiring you to be a better entrepreneur, to be a better person in life. And in this program, um, I'm blessed to have one of the giants in Zimbabwe, um, a very um, interesting, enterprising uh, entrepreneur, a very youngster who God has raised in the marketplace. I call him the marketplace millionaire, the marketplace apostle. And uh, it is my singular honor again uh, to welcome to this program today, um, Mr. Uh, Munyaradzi Gwatizo, the CEO of Astro Mobile Zimbabwe. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Pastor Ben. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, good to have you on the program. Yeah, thank you for um, inviting me. Thank you so much. How is family? Family is blessed. You know, you know everyone it, is excited. Sure, sure. Yeah. We thank God. And uh, today um, I've got uh, youngsters in this, especially our nation, Zimbabwe. Uh, who's trying, you know, to to be to up their 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 lives? Who's trying to start something, you know, to be better people in life, to reach the levels where you have reached? And today they are privileged to have somebody who have walked this journey. At at what stage, Mr. Guatizo, did you start business? Um, I think I basically started business when I was still a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was not by design, but it was basically by default. All right. Um, I grew up as a, pretty much as an orphan. My, my mother passed away when I was nine years old. Mm. Um, and, you know, I didn't really know my father. Mm. You know, um, yeah. So when my mother passed away, I think me and my siblings, I think we were kind of forced to be enterprising. Mm -hmm. So from that time, that's when I actually started to learn how to, to buy and sell stuff okay. for us to be able to actually survive. Mm. So it, 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 I, I would want to say that that's the time when I started business. Mm. Uh, it was when I was nine years old. Nine years. Yeah. Wow. You know, there is no age that um, God really said at this age you should start a business. You are hearing from uh, Mr. Batizo that at the age of nine years he started business. And uh, do you still recall what, what was the first thing that you did at nine years uh, before you reached where you are nine, right now? The exact thing that you started uh, selling and uh, at what price, if you still remember? I mean, I may not really remember the price, mm -hmm. but um, what I know is uh, we used to go to Mbare Msika. Mm -hmm. I was born in Mbare. Wow. I was raised in Mbare. So we used to go to Mbare Msika to buy tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So we'd buy a crate of tomatoes then we then bring it at our yard, then you then repackage them into five, 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 five. <laughs> um, I might not be so sure about the amount, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that was the, the first business that, uh, that I started to do, mm. um, you know, at the age of nine. Obviously, I was doing this with my, with my brothers and my sisters, but I was the younger one. So I was the one who was left to attend the, the, the little market that mm. was in the front of our yard. Wow. Yeah. You know, I was uh, actually uh, studying your profile, and uh, inside your profile I saw that um, you were looking after your, your siblings at the age of uh, uh, 19, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, how was it, you know, to go to school and uh, coming back from school, there's also some other people, you, you by yourself, you're actually trying to, to make it in life, and there's also other people that you're looking at. How difficult was it, and what was your inspiration to do that? Um, I think it's, it's, it's always difficult to look after children when you're also a child. Mm -hmm. But obviously circumstances, they force you to do that. But me, obviously, having grown up in a situation that I grew up in, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of cultivates love and responsibility in you. So to me, I was very excited to do it because I wanted to also make a difference in other people's lives. So mm -hmm. ideally, I wouldn't have wanted you know, uh, my other siblings to have gone through the road that I had gone through. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to actually, you know, create a better life for them. 
so it, it kind of you know motivated me to say you know what I have to I have to work very hard so it, it, it kind of forced me to to look for a job at a very young age I think I started working it was when I was 18 mm. and that time I couldn't in as much as I'd, I had very good grades, I couldn't go straight to university because I had responsibilities. So I had to look for a job and I had to then start going to school while I was actually working. So it, it, it kind of created a higher sense of responsibility in me. Mm. So looking at now, uh, you finding a job, you are starting now to, to do something. Is what you are doing now uh, connected to what you did on your first job or is it totally different? Uh, it's totally different. So basically my first job I worked in a bank. Okay. So I, 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 I worked as a clerk in a bank initially um, and it's obviously unrelated to, to what, what doing I'm doing now. now but I want to believe that whatever I was doing it, uh, it kind of shaped me to then end up doing what I then ended up doing. Mm -hmm. Because obviously you know meeting different people each and every day it kind of gave me inspiration to obviously pursue the dreams that I had within me. So basically I've always been an entrepreneur. Like what I told you, from the age of nine, mm -hmm. I already started um, buying and selling stuff. So when I was there, you then start to see other people running their own businesses and it kind of like inspires you to say, you know what, if these people are, already, are also running their own businesses, I think I can also start my own thing and I can also start pursuing my vision and my dream that I, that I, that I had. Mm -hmm. And uh, working from a bank into a mobile communications uh, business, uh, what really got into you, you know, to, 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 to make that shift from uh, the financial man into um, uh, mobile communications? What really happened uh, between that time? I think what happened is I was not satisfied. So the word is satisfied. Uh, yeah, I was okay. not satisfied by just having, you know, an ordinary eight to five job where mm -hmm. I just wake up, go to work, five o'clock, go back home. So it, it, it helped me to invoke the talents that I had. So I've always had a passion for, for electronics. So pretty much all my spare times, I would then buy broken devices, mm -hmm. fix them. And um, on a Friday after work, I would jump into a bus, go to Zambia and, you know, sell those second-hand phones. Mm. Then on a Sunday, come back, arrive at 5 a.m., rush back home, bath, come to back work. to work. Mm. So pretty much it, it then evoked that talent in me to say, you know what, I'm, I'm a technician um, and I can start fixing phones. In that time, there weren't so many people that fixed phones in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Zambia, they were actually starting to have their own mobile network. So there was a big market. In, 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 in Zambia. So typically I could go there with two phones only. Wow. To sell and then come back and the money and you actually make made it. There? Yeah, I think each each phone was like about a hundred dollars. Right. So I would go the, go there then sell two hundred dollars. Mm. You know, I'd make a profit of maybe fifty dollars. All the way from here to Zambia just for fifty dollars? Yeah. Wow. So you are you <coughs> you are hearing what uh, the, the captains of the industries uh, are saying and what they've uh, gone through. There are some people who feel that you need a million to start a business. They feel you need a, a, a couple of thousands to start a business. If somebody can travel all the way from here, uh, close to about a thousand kilometers to and from Zambia, just for fifty dollars, it shows that this person is focused. So no matter where you are, um, you know uh, how much you have. Uh, you might not even have a cent in your pocket, but your mindset can start a business for you. We are hearing it from a champion himself, um, Mr. Munyaradzi uh, Gwatizo, the CEO of uh, Astromobile Zimbabwe. And uh, we, we are with him in the, uh, in the studio uh, trying to help you, you know, to take him from at the age of nine. Right now he's not even um, um, uh, 40 and he has made it in life. Why? Because he has got passion and desire. And uh, Mr. Gwatizo, um, looking at, um, now you told me you, you, you went to Zambia with uh, two mobile phones to sell, but now you've got um, uh, interest in more than 15 countries, you know, your business is there. What's inspiring you? Why not only do business in Zimbabwe? Why taking it uh, global like that? What's the secret behind that? I think the, the, the secret is when you understand the possibility of doing great things, mm -hmm. you, you become unstoppable. Wow. And I think the issue is, one thing that I've always wanted, even as a young man, was, was to be a man of significance. 
wow. to actually have real impact in the world. I think like what I told you, I grew up as an orphan. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I told myself is I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that every orphan that I come across, mm. they will not struggle to go to school because they've lost their parents. Mm. So to me, whenever I see the amount of business that I can do in Zimbabwe, I actually see that it won't get me the right amount of money for me to make you know, a global impact in terms of wow. actually making sure that, um, wow. that we do that. So every time I come across someone that I can help, it pushes me to work harder. Mm. It pushes me to do more. Um, and, and, and also basically knowing that other people can do it. Um, you know, there is nothing that can also stop us to, 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 to do it. Hmm. Um, so, so, so for me, uh, you know, the sky is the limit. We are living in a digital era where everything is connected. You're able to do business with people in China when you're here in Zimbabwe. You're mm -hmm. able to do business with people in Australia when you're here in Zimbabwe. So pretty much there's nothing that can limit someone to say, I only want to sell things to people in Zimbabwe. in Zimbabwe. So for us, we want to sell our products to the rest of Africa. We want to sell our products eventually to the rest of the world. Um, and, um, and, and we believe that we've got the right products, we've got the right solutions, and there's nothing that can stop us to do that. Mm. Wow. You know, you, you might be um, limited only to the small circle that you, 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 know, you, you know, like as a Zimbabwean, you feel that um, almost every industry or every area of business uh, is occupied. Yet we've got people that are looking outside Zimbabwe. Yes, they are carrying the flag of Zimbabwe uh, outside and they are, they are proving the world that even in Zimbabwe, we can dominate the world. So let not the sky be your limit. But as long as you are aspiring to do something, there are people already who, who are doing it. There are people already who are taking things globally. And if you are willing to learn, if you are willing to, you know, to just submit yourself and be humble and take yourself, uh, you know, get information and take your business uh, globally, this is what Mr. Guadizo is doing. You know, he, he, there's something that I, I learned from you uh, the, the, the time we had the discussion. You were, you were just giving credit to God. Everything that you're doing, I asked you a question, you say it's because of God. And um, I understand you're looking after more than a thousand orphans that you're looking after. And sometimes it's not even there in the newspaper. What, what's the secret behind what you're doing? What inspires you to do that? And you don't even care whether the world is watching. I, I think for me, you know, growing up as an orphan, I don't see helping an orphan as a business. All right. Um, so to me, it's not something that I feel right to market about. Okay. Because it's someone's life that you're impacting, and I don't think it's, it's, it's up for sale. Hmm. Um, that's why we never talk about our initiatives that we do for helping orphans. Mm -hmm. Because we are doing it because we believe we have to make a difference. We are not doing it because we want the world to know. Hmm. We are doing it because we want to make a difference in those kids' life. So that's, that's basically what is, what is inspiring us to do that. Hmm. And that's why we never talk about it. We'll continue doing it, and we'll still never talk about it. Our target is to at least you know, assist one million kids in the next five years. Hmm. And um, you know, pretty much you know, making a difference in, in, in one million kids, it's impacting Africa in a big way. True. Because it, you know, they will be able to, to go to school, they will be able to look after their parents, they will be able to look after their own siblings, and they will be able to create a life for themselves. So for me, that is real impact, is when we start to do things because we believe it's right. Uh, and uh, we stop doing things because we want the world to see. Mm. I think it's a mind shift that we should just have to, 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 to impact into people's lives because we care about people and we care about humanity. It's not just about profit. Wow. Yeah. You are hearing it. It's not about profit, but it's about doing your God-given mandate. Mr. Batizo has been helping uh, orphans. He has been doing a lot of charity work, and a lot of people are being impacted. And this is one of the, one of the keys that we also would want to give a, an aspiring entrepreneur that as God is blessing you, you must be a blessing to someone. And this has taken him far. He has uh, shared uh, platforms with big guys that we are not even able to, to mention names here. But because of the grace and the love of God that he has, and God is helping him. The Lord expects us to be creative, innovative, and empowering. To achieve this, join Pastor Lenny on the next episode of Be Inspired as he gives us some more life success tips. 
Thank you all for listening to this episode of Be Inspired. I hope you have been inspired by today's program and I also hope you will put to act and practice everything that we have discussed today. Let's meet again next time as Pastor Lenny gives us more success tips.